Uh, I'm gonna punch it, right? Huh? I'm gonna punch it. the other side because there's a tangle right there as well. G'day folks, welcome back. Now uh, at the moment we're out of Botany and um, the aim is just for another catch and cook. So in terms of catch and cooks I've got a bit of catching up to do as um, it's been a couple of weeks since the last uh, uploaded the video and uh, we're chopping at the bit so finally we're here. Today the conditions probably aren't the best because at the moment it's blowing a southeasterly wind. It's at about 20 kilometers per hour, but um, it's predicted to have wind gusts up to 40 kilometers an hour. So the conditions aren't really the best, but um, we're on the lee side of Botany Bay at the moment, so it gives us a bit of shelter. Hopefully that should um, give us a pleasant night's fishing. So uh, as for now, start fishing and we'll check back in. We're on to some fish. Okay, so it's been a very slow night, just due to uh, unfavorable conditions. The wind's been blowing us off course for so long, but now um, we shifted our tactics. We're going for some live bait. So, and managed to gather a few so far, hopefully enough for uh, an early morning session on kingfish. And hopefully that pays off. But uh, I'll just show you how the yakas are going. So I've just got to spade it up. I'm going over the side. So we're there at the bottom, bro. The yakas. All right, let's go drop it all the way to the bottom. Still going. Okay, so we hit the bottom now. And it shouldn't take long. Yep, and we're on. Oh no. Yep, still on. Got it. Uh, this one feels a bit big might not be good for a live bait size but we'll bring it up anyway let's have a look come on dude oh no actually this, this one's okay for a livey we'll take that oh, thank you mate sort yourself out and that's how quick it is <laughs> a bit better. Hook set but don't bite me off please if you're a tailor. Okay. Give him a quick measure too, just to make sure he's a keeper. Uh, yep.
Okay, so we're gonna call it a day now. Weather's just starting to turn for the worst. It's really picking up at the moment. I was pondering continue, to continue live baiting uh, as the sun was rising, but uh, it's looking like uh, it's not gonna happen. So uh, overall, it gets cut. Landed a, landed a bit of a feed there for the few um, red butter species. So um, follow through home, catch a call. I'm not sure what I'm going to be making yet, but um, check back in once we're at my alfresco kitchen. Okay, so we're back at the alfresco kitchen now. And uh, after some serious thought and consideration on the drive home, I decided we're going to be having sashimi for this catch and cook. Also, um, with the sashimi, I'm going to be using the humble yellow towel. Just give you a quick look at those. Yeah, so these um, were our live bait from um, last night. And regarding the yellow towel, you probably would have uh, heard me say this in um, a few of my previous videos. Uh, this is a very underrated fish and it's possibly my most absolute favorite fish for sashimi. So just give you a quick close up on one of these ones. So what I've done with these yellow tails is um, they've been gutted and scaled, rinsed and left to dry in the fridge. And um, this is the average size that they get. They do grow double to, to double the size of these, which are the, my preferred size for sashimi, just due to the fact that it's um, a lot easier to process. But these, this size here, they work just fine. I probably wouldn't go any smaller. It's just that because it gets too fiddly and uh, you can probably make a big mess of things when you try to process them. Yeah, but so as for now, Let's start off with our, our sashimi. You want some too? Hmm? Okay, so let's start it off with uh, this one here. So we're filleting any fish. You just start it behind the head on an angle. And with the smaller fish, it's just a, a bit easier. You can generally take the fillet off in one foul swoop, like so. You can't have some. Down. Okay, so just give you a close up on the fillet there. With these fillets, I'm gonna be leaving the skin on at the moment. It's just easier to process for the sashimi later. So that's the second fillet, as you can see, nice and clean off the bone. Now with these bones, I'm not going to be wasting them either. What I'm going to be doing the, with these is I'm going to be rolling them in a bit of corn flour uh, with a bit of salt, and then we're going to deep fry them until they're crispy. And they're going to be sensational. So just set that aside. Now the next part of the process, what I'll do now is uh, we'll just trim off the rib bones. Okay, so that's one boneless and soon to be skinless fillet. Next up, I just portioned that out just to, you can get the picture, the portions of uh, the sashimi portions that you want. And uh, this is where we take it off the skin. And I just leave it on this, that board there, just for uh, storage. So many flies right now. And next one. This will be discarded into the garden. Trim off that little tail bit, because it's very hard. Now some people, don't like this dark meat. I, um, as a preference, have an acquired taste for this, so I'm gonna leave that on. But uh, if you don't like it, you can always trim it off. Okay. So that makes one side of the yellow tail. It gives you four lovely sashimi portions like so. 
and uh, we'll proceed with the other side. As you can see, none of um, the flesh is actually touching this board. So as it removes off the skin, it goes onto another clean board and we discard the bits that we don't want in a separate bowl. Okay, so that's one fish, five more to go. So I'm gonna continue processing these and then um, we'll check back in when we're at the next part of the process. Okay, so we're ready for the next part of the process. So here's our lovely plate of the sashimi portions. If my dog Bundy would let me finish. Bundy, what are you doing girl? Hey? Hello? Anyway, uh, where were we? Okay, so this is our lovely plate of sashimi portions. And um, as mentioned earlier, these bones and heads uh, are not gonna go to waste at all. Come here, girl. Oi, come here. Bundy. 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 Oi. Can I have a piece of fish? Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now with these, um, we'll uh, wrap these fillets up and we'll keep them in the fridge to chill while we process the bones. So with these bones, what I'm gonna do now is basically just cut them up into um, smaller portions, easier to roll in the corn flour and deep fry. And the heads, I'll split them in half. So we'll start that and we'll check back in when it's time for the tasting. Down, go. So there you have it, yellowtail sashimi, crispy fried yellowtail bones, served with rice, a sweetened sour uh, Vietnamese fish sauce, soy sauce and wasabi. As you can see, um, I highly recommend that you um, get out there and do this, go catch your own fish. As you can see, what I've done is um, it's quite sustainable, it's also healthy, fun and tasty, and I highly recommend it. Now let's see what it tastes like. So, if anyone that's ever traveled to um, Japan, when you enter a restaurant and they serve you a fish, um, you're guaranteed to be served the entire fish, basically the bones, um, if it's, um, the meat is in a sashimi, or for a shabu shabu or hot pot, the bones will be more or less um, deep fried to a crisp like so. Just give you a close up on that. And um, served, and they are quite lovely. Now let's see if, um, my crispy fried fish bones matches to the ones in Japan. Mmm. Got a little bit of sauce. See the bones have been fried through crisp. You can eat every, literally every single part of it. It's like a fish crisp. Mmm. You can probably pick up the sound effect how crunchy it is. Let's try a bit of sashimi. <coughs> Plenty of wasabi there. Straight into the sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was a big wasabi kick there. Let's get a bit of rice, wash it down. Mm. Now, I'll explain to you why 
I love yellowtail sashimi so much. Yellowtail, although it's an oily fish, it has a very mild taste with a slight hint of richness to it. It's not overpowering like a, um, like a salmon or a tuna, um, even though it's fatty, and it contains a very high concentration of omega freeze as well. So I highly recommend that you um, try this if you haven't already, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Go back for another piece here. This is the belly part there, the bit of skin on that. Mm. I'll just show you this one too. So these were, when I filleted the fish, that's the rib trimmings there. And you can see how crispy it is. It's, it's like a potato chip. Just dip that into the sauce and we'll crunch on it. Mm. Mm, that's sensational guys. So guys, once again guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, for those of you've been following me uh, on my channel through my whole journey, you put, probably would have gathered by now, um, although I love fishing, um, I, I don't consider myself as uh, a fishing maestro of any, any type. Um, in fact, I'm quite rubbish at fishing, but um, I can cook and I love to eat fish. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video guys. And as for now, I'm gonna kick back and enjoy this um, sensational meal on this lovely afternoon and until the next video bye for now <laughs>